So, that is a way to kick us into the Christmas season, get us all awake, ready to go, and ready to dive into God's Word today. We're going to be in Luke chapter 1 today, which is a logical place to be when it comes to the Christmas season. So over the next few weeks, we're going to take a look at some of the characters around the Christmas story so you can get an understanding of where they came from. Now, we all understand this part when Mary's already had Jesus and then everyone's, you know, there, the ox and lamb are keeping time and all these different things that take place with the manger and all that stuff. However, what about before she ever made it? What about before she ever took the journey to Egypt? What about that journey before that journey that had taken place? So, yesterday, we have this thing called Breakfast with Santa, and some churches would frown upon us having such a thing, but we were there because it's an outreach, and it's a chance to reach out to your community, and it's a way for people to come to the church and find out that there's actually normal people that go to church, and they're actually kind people, and uh, whenever you're feeding people, it's always a good thing as well. So yesterday, all these little kiddos show up, and we, we had the, the couch up on the stage here, and then, you know, Santa makes his way all the way down, and, I mean, he's like a rock star for these little kids. Kids. It's like, oh my goodness, like Santa's coming. Or if you're the elf, you know, from the movie The Elf, then oh my goodness, you know, 10 a.m., Santa's going to be here kind of thing. So they come down here, but it's kind of fun, too, to watch the parents because you see the joy in all these little kiddos. I mean, it is such an exciting time for them. We had, uh, we're handing out little, you know, gifts for the kids as they were coming through, and the parents are great. And even some adults got some pictures with Santa because there's still that side of you, that kid in you that wants to be a part of that. And so, once again, you go on Facebook and see all these different pictures but Santa is that rock star and for all these little kids that that made everything for some people like oh this is just breakfast those those kiddos yeah they like the food and that stuff but man if, if they had no breakfast it was just a time with Santa they would all be here and thankfully we had Kim here who, who captured all these different moments for these kids and for these adults to be with Santa so then later in the day people go home and how many people here yesterday watched the football game be honest right you guys know I'm talking about Boise State and Ohio, uh, and Hawaii, right? That's the game I'm talking about. No, Ohio State played, right? And so we had to be there. And you had to watch what was going on. Now, I didn't, I didn't get to catch up until the second half. When I showed up, they were losing. And then all of a sudden, you know, they just turned all the way around. And Ohio State became Ohio State. But let me ask you a question. What if these little kiddos showed up for breakfast with Santa? And all it was was breakfast. And there was no Santa. That would be pretty crushing, wouldn't it? I mean, what, what's the purpose in a breakfast with Santa without having Santa? Uh, how would those kids get through their day? And especially if the church promised it, then you don't have that. How do they get through the rest of their day? Now, that would be kind of a bad thing, wouldn't it? That a church would promise to have something, then that wouldn't take place. Let me ask you a second question. How would you be today if Ohio State would have lost? <laughs> Because you play all these games all the way up to the very end, and they lose one game, and you're we'd be completely crushed by it, wouldn't we? Because we'd all be sitting on pins and needles. Are they even going to make the playoff now? Are they going to be in it? And these, you have to realize something. These are 18 to 21, maybe 22-year-old kids, young people, that are given everything they can for a national championship to put you know, everything on the line from one school to represent your entire state and represent your entire conference. And man, if they lose a game, then what? What do we do the next day? So there's a hope within these. And sometimes that hope is fulfilled. Like thankfully, Santa showed up. And it was a game changer for all those little kids. He's in the back. Mrs. Claus is taking care of him. She did a really good job of getting him you know, ready to go. Not just you know, you know, getting him in a suit and stuff like that. But you know, it takes months to get Santa to where he needs to be and get ready to go. You know, and he'd had some of his own because he had to do that with the beard and everything. But man, when Santa showed up, it was like rock concert. Front row seats, VIP. IP, everyone's getting to come up the stage and all that stuff. That promise was fulfilled. And then in the first half last night, Ohio State wasn't doing so well, right? And so you start going through every scenario. Well, if they lose, what's going to happen here? How are they going to look at it? Whatever it might be. And then the second half, they win or they come back and win. They outscore them like, I don't know, 28 to nothing or 27 to nothing. They come back and win and all of a sudden it's like, oh, we can breathe again. Because that hope part was fulfilled. When we look at the Christmas story, here's what you have to remember. God has been silent for 400 years. No one's heard from him. 
And in the Old Testament at this time, when he would share a message, he would share it with his prophets. And the prophets would bring back the message that God had given him directly to share with the people. But no one was hearing from them. They hadn't heard. So everyone is waiting for the next step and they all have this hope. Generation after generation has gone that know God, but they're also waiting for what God is about to do next. And when is it is He is going to show up? But see, He didn't show up to everyone first. He had a plan in place. And He had to reach out to certain people so that they were prepared. And these people, by the way, are people just like you and me. Just like the people that played in the game yesterday are people just like you and me. Now, some of them run faster, they throw a ball further, they're you know, bigger, they're stronger, they happen to have a uniform and a helmet, which is always a good thing to have in football. But even yesterday, with all the people that had taken place, with everything that was going on, with Santa being ready and all that stuff, they're still ordinary people. But see, those things don't take place unless people want to be a part of it. Unless people choose to want to serve. Unless people want to prepare other people to get them ready for whatever the big game or the event might be. See, God's going to show up. And He's going to show up in a big way. But every day, it's the people like you and me, the ordinary people like us, that get to represent God. Are you prepared for that? Because just like last year and the year before, and however long it's been celebrated, December 25th is coming. And that's the day that we're going to celebrate Christmas. Are we being that light? Are we choosing to be that light? We're going to start today with a young lady by the name of Mary. And this is her story of her journey before the journey. Starting in verse 26 in Luke chapter 1. There's a Bible in front of you. You can grab that from the pew if you'd like. It says, In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. Now, it seems odd, but at the beginning of the story, we're talking about Mary, and yet they bring up Elizabeth and her pregnancy. Her pregnancy is with John the Baptist. John the Baptist is Jesus' cousin. You're going to find out that they are actually related here in a little bit. So people have wondered, well, when John the Baptist saw Jesus, why didn't he know that it was Jesus? And didn't they have family reunions, all that kind of good stuff that had taken place? We can, we can answer all those things. But for right now, we know that the story is starting with Elizabeth, who is going to have John the Baptist, who is Jesus' cousin. And it now focuses back on Mary, because this is where we're going to focus on today. It says, She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Let's stop here for a second. Mary, in some of your versions, it says betrothed. And they were engaged. And it used to be that when you were engaged you were already considered married. Also, if you were engaged, it was set up by families. So the families actually would go and have this arrangement made where you get a goat, you get a sheep, you get some gold, you get whatever it might be, and they would set this thing up. Here's the next thing to understand. With Mary, she is in her mid-teens. She could be anywhere from 13 to 15 because that is the age that they would be married. Now, I think about this because I have a 16-year-old daughter and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, Mary would have been actually younger than her and I can't imagine even having you know that young as far as a teenager being married. But at this time, this was the culture. Whenever they took the son back to Jerusalem for all the different stuff they had to do, they took him at the age of 13. That was considered adulthood. The United States, 18 is considered adulthood for some things. 21 is considered for other things. 35, if you're going to run for the President of the United States, is considered that's when you're wise enough to be able to actually you know, run the country. But in this culture, this is a teenager, 13 to 15 years of age, whose cousin is pregnant. She is about to meet someone that she's, I would think that wouldn't be expecting, but at the same time that she is absolutely ready for. Because here's what takes place. Verse 28. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. Not teenager, not young lady. She's considered a woman. So she's anywhere, once again, from 13 to 15 years old. Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. God's with you. This whole prearrangement thing, everything that's taken place, this has all been set in time. Just know this, that you are a blessed woman. You're a blessed woman because God is with you. So that's how he starts the conversation. Verse 29 says, Confused and disturbed, 
Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Now, it's interesting to me because the angel doesn't show up and say, hey, I'm the angel. She recognizes, however, that this is an angel. So angels w would have had to have shown up at some point in some time. And did you know, according to Scripture, that angels still are with us today? In fact, you could be ministering to an angel and you don't even know it. The Bible tells us they go back and forth between heaven and you don't know and I don't know when it is that an angel could show up. In the Old Testament at this time, people would know because many times when the angel showed up, there was a bright line, you know, shining glory, all that kind of stuff around it, and it freaked them out. And the angel knew that. And so listen to what the angel says. Don't be afraid, and then uses her name, Mary. Don't be afraid, which is a reminder. We've shared this before. It comes 365 times in the Bible. It's a daily reminder. You do not need to be afraid. But Mary wasn't afraid. She was confused, and she was disturbed. Because when an angel showed up, that meant God was up to something. And so, by her being confused and disturbed, what she is basically saying is, why would this angel show up to me? Because I know that I am not worthy. And so, so many times it happens within our walk that we understand that we're not worthy. And so many times we don't take steps of in our faith because we're like, well, I'm really not worthy. And yet in this darkest time of the year, in this dark world in which we live, we have to make the choice whether or not we want to be worthy. Because God has already said to you and He said to me, I already know you're not qualified. I already know that you can't do things. I already know that there are certain things that are beyond you. And that's why you need me along the way. But it's up to you and it's up to me as to whether or not we choose to walk with God during this darkest time of the year. But Mary, when this angel showed up and Gabriel's in front of her, he's like, hey, don't be afraid. She was confused and she was disturbed by it. Because why her? Why you? Why me? Why does God take ordinary people and do extraordinary things with them? Why would God start the Christmas story with a teenage girl who at this time is considered a favored woman in God's eyes? And so see, culture can change how we view stories within the Bible. Because when we think of a teenager, we're like, there's no way a teenager could be ready for this. There's no way that a 13 to 15 year old, my goodness, they can't even drive yet. They're not even old enough to vote. They're not even going to you know, drink for another 7 to 10 years. I mean, there's so many things that they're not able to do. But in this culture, it was looked at completely differently. And you know who knew that? God did. So when God showed up there, it was at the beginning of her ministry, and Mary didn't even realize it. Maybe there was a part of her just like, you know what, I just want to be a teenager. I just kind of want to go out and do whatever. You know what, they've already arranged a marriage for me. My life is over. Whatever it might be. We don't know how Mary is viewing, viewing this, but we're going to find out. It says, don't be afraid, Mary, the angel told her, for you have found favor with God. Verse 31, you will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be very great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, it's important to understand that knowing that the lineage goes through David, because in the Old Testament, that was pointed out that it's going to be an ancestor of David that's going to come through so that that is going to be the, the Messiah, the chosen one. And so it's very important that you understand that when this is written about being along that ancestry, this is pointing to the one who can come to bring eternal life. So don't just go past those words and go, oh, well, that's not a big deal. It's a huge deal. Because what we find out is that that lineage points directly to, from David to Jesus. Mary asked the angel, how can this possibly happen? For I am a virgin. And the angel replied, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Now, we don't know how and when and all this other kind of stuff took place, but it says this, so the baby to be born will be holy and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, and he lets her know this, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month for nothing is impossible with God. 
So she has this cousin who is about to give birth. She's in her end of her second trimester, heading into her third trimester. And she wasn't supposed to have a baby because, you know, it just can't be done. So the angel not only shares that, listen, this is what the step you're going to take. But on top of it, there's a miracle that's taken place within your own family. And that miracle within your own family is like, I mean, it's, it's going to happen really soon. So if it's going to happen soon with them, it's probably going to be happening soon with you as well. Just want to make sure that you understand what's going on. Now, would it be nice? Would it be nice if an angel and tell us, this is what you're supposed to do. This is how it's supposed to happen. Oh, by the way, you have family members that you're going to have to support you. You know, if you're not sure what the will, what God's will is, here's what it is. There's no time frames, by the way, to give it. But this is this is how it's going to be, and this is all I'm asking you to do. And by the way, I want you to point. I want to point something out. Nothing is impossible when it comes to God. If you are cold-hearted, if you are like, you know what, I, I just can't, I can't deal with people anymore. I'm mad all the time. I have an addiction. I'm terrible with my finances. I'm just flat out mean to people. I don't even want to be around people. I don't, we can fill in the blank. I have a terrible past. I have struggles I already know I'm going to have in the future. I do things that I know that I shouldn't do and I'm sure certain that God wouldn't do it or wouldn't want me to do it. I have all those things that are going on. But if God were to just show up to me all of a sudden and say, this is what you're going to do, and this is how it's going to happen, and this is where you're going to get support, the support from, would that make you change? See, that's a question you have to answer and I have to answer. Because it seems like it'd be a whole lot easier. Hey, since the angel showed up and it was a bright, shining thing, they said, don't be afraid. Then all of a sudden, this is what you're going to do. Okay, well, I'm, you know, I'm 13, 14, 15 years old. I don't even need a resume. I've already got it. I'm good to go. I'll just go out and handle that because God said that's how it's going to be. And yet, God has already given you and given me the exact instructions on how it is we should live as a believer. But do we follow that? In the busyness of life, the craziness of our schedules, all the kind of things, we want to know that, okay, I'm going to be a full-time missionary. Okay, I'm going to be bivocational. Okay, I'm going to go and start my own nonprofit. Okay, I'm going to be a pastor. Okay, I'm going to be a teacher. Okay, I'm going to be a Bible study leader. Okay, I'm going to be a person that teaches people how to devotions. If, if God would just tell me all those things, then it would make it so much easier on me. God didn't give, the angel didn't give Mary a title. God didn't say, you're going to do this on Tuesday, you're going to do this on Thursday, you're going to do this on Friday. God gave her a direction within her life, and he does the same for you and the same for me. What gets in the way of that is not God, it's you and me. If you were to break the New Testament down to two sentences, they would be Jesus, and you can quote him on both of them, and he said this, Love others as I have loved you. Go and make disciples in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's it. Love others as I have loved you. Doesn't come with a time frame. Doesn't come with a title. Go and make disciples in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That was why God sent His Son. Because He didn't want anybody to miss out on those things. And the way that we find God's will and the steps that we need to take is by loving others even when they aren't lovable. And we love them just as Jesus loved them with all of their flaws. And we love them with all of our flaws. And at the end of the day, our goal is to make disciples in God's name, not ours. He started, God started with a teenage girl. But she had to make the choice as to whether or not she believed. The story continues. Mary responded... I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. See, we don't take the steps in our ministry. We don't take the steps in our life. We don't take the steps toward God 
because we know that we're not qualified. But because we know we're not qualified, we just stop altogether. And we can't find out what it is that God wants us to do if we don't take a step toward God. And we can't find that out if we don't take a step with God. We end up on our own. We do things by ourselves. And then we struggle a little bit, then we turn back to God. And God's, been, God's standing there going, hey, I've been here the entire time. If God can do this in a teenager's life, what is it He can do in your life? Especially if you've lived through the teenage years. And you have the wisdom that He's given you. And you've seen what happens in life. And now God wants you to take that and use it in your life to reach and to care for others. Mary wasn't qualified. None of us are. What are the qualifications for carrying God's Son? You have to be female, right? So that takes out half all the guys here, right? So she had to be female. What are the other qualifications that we have? We don't know. God chose her because of her heart. And she was willing to take it. Think about this for a second. She hasn't gone to Egypt yet. They aren't heading out for the census. None of those things are taking place. It's just her and an angel. She knows that the angel is from God. And this angel shares things with her that is going to put her to shame. It's going to put her to shame within her family. It's going to put her to shame within her community. It's going to put her to shame with everyone around her. And what did Mary do? She said this. And this is what we have to focus upon when it comes to this Christmas season. Verse 38, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. So when it comes down to our step, it starts with a step of faith of being willing to take that step. Maybe it's a step because we're just like, you know what, God, I see you all around me and I believe that you're there. And yeah, I know that there's a God, but I've never really taken that step with you. And maybe it's because... I feel unqualified. And maybe it's because I know that I'm not worthy. And maybe it's because we can fill in the blank. You can fill in the blank for whatever it is that you feel. But God is standing there and God is just waiting for you to say, you know what? That step that you're going to take is a step of faith. Are you willing? And then for Mary, she says, I am your servant. Which means she's going to serve and care for others. It means she's going to love others as she's going to see her son love others. It means she's going to follow him all the way to the end and be reminded that I'm going to make disciples in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. So know this today. You're not qualified. None of us are. And it would be a whole lot easier if an angel just all of a sudden showed up and said, this is how you're going to do things. But in the busyness of the world, we may not even recognize it because it's just too loud and too crazy. But if you and I are called... To be a light in this dark world. If you and I are called to love others as Jesus loved others. If you and I are called to make disciples in His name. Just like, journey, just like Mary in this journey before her journey. Before any of this ever takes place. Know that God uses ordinary people like you and like me. But you have to be willing. And I have to be willing. And at the end of the day, it's not what's going on in my mind. It's what's going on in my heart when it comes to showing other people Jesus. Would you challenge yourself this week? Because it's loud outside. Would you challenge yourself this week? Because it gets dark really quickly. Would you challenge yourself this week because your schedule is already set for the whole week and it's so busy and crazy you don't even know what tomorrow is going to hold. And that's fine. Just rest in today. Ask yourself this, are you a willing servant? Will you be a willing servant? And can you, like Mary, stop long enough to say, I am not just a servant, I'm God's servant. I'm God's representative. I'm the one that God chose to show His Son to others. Right where you sit today, if you just pause for a moment... I want you to think about your personal journey. 
I want you to think about where your journey has been and where it's going to take you. And I want you to pause for a moment to look to see where God is in that journey. Are you recognizing Him in it? Are you seeking Him in it? Or are you waiting for Him to just all of a sudden show up and have this angel and then, oh, that's how we have to do things. And yet, He's already given the message to you and to me through His Word. Are you willing to follow it? In this Christmas season, there are so many people that need to see that. There's so many people that need to know that there's a hope, that there's grace, that there's love, and that there's peace. And the only place that they may be able to get the chance to see that is through those that are the willing servants for a Lord that loves you and me. Heavenly Father, as we come to you, God, at this time, or I think many times when we look at Mary, we just think, oh, well, that was just Jesus' mom. We don't think about what she went through to get to that point. Lord, I, I don't know anyone here that's come face to face with an angel, but when an angel shows up and says, this is what you're going to do, and this is how you're going to do it, and she was so willing. God, would you help prepare our hearts so that we can be willing? So at the end of the day, the end of the conversation, the end of whatever event that comes forward that we could say, I was your servant. And Lord, I am willing to be your servant. God, speak to each one of us as we looked at these characters within the Christmas story this week before the journey ever takes place to understand what it is that they've gone through. And Lord, help us to rest in you a lot enough to know that what we're going through, you can tackle it. Because through you, nothing, there's not one thing that isn't possible. Help us to hold on to that. Help us to love others as you love us. And God will give you this time. We love you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Would you all please rise? If you'd all bow your heads one last time, please. If there's anyone here today that hasn't hit, taken that step, hasn't taken that step of faith toward God, to where, yeah, you know that you're just an ordinary person and you know that you're not qualified, all those things that we've all been through at times. But instead of trying to fix stuff or to know everything or whatever it might be that you struggle with personally, that you're ready to take that step of faith toward Him. See, a Savior is about to be born. And that's what we celebrate this entire month, is the birth of that Savior. And part of that for each one of us is that time where we ask Him into our heart so that we could have that birth. We could start anew no matter what the struggles are. And it's just stopping long enough to recognize that God sent His Son Jesus for you and for me. Seems crazy how He would allow Him to die on the cross, but that wasn't the end of the story. When He rose again from the dead, He showed us that we can have eternal life. If that's a step that you've never taken, just stop long enough to recognize in God for who God is and, and, and asking His Son the gift that He gave you into your heart. If that's a step you want to take today, just right where you stand, would you just raise your hand? Please keep all heads bowed and eyes closed. We're going to be going next door here in a little bit. And when we do, if this is something you want to talk about later, maybe you're not comfortable raising your hand or you know coming forward, whatever it might be, grab me when we're over there. We'll talk more about that. I want you to know for sure that you have a place in eternity. It's not rocket science. It's not any special equation. None of that stuff. God loves you just as you are, right where you are. An unqualified, ordinary guy or gal who he can do wonderful things through if we're willing and if we choose to serve others because of him. Heavenly Father, this time is yours. We thank you for your love and your many blessings. Lord, as we sing this final verse and then we head next door, God, I want to say thank you for all the people today that uh, came in to help out with the food, the, the different ministries, acts, and, and the ladies' ministry, and all the guys that are helping out, and everyone in every capacity. Lord, would you nourish that food to our bodies? Would you help us enjoy that time together of fellowship? We thank you for the example of Mary today. Lord, she chose to be your servant. She chose 
to follow you even when she knew that it would be difficult. So God, during this dark time of the year, this darkest time of the year, Lord, would you help us to be that light and to show that love to others. And God, we give you this time. We thank you for these moments. It's in your name that we pray. Amen.